Hey everybody, Beandrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new series, kind of. This is actually kind of like episode 1.5. If you uh, caught the Alpine Ebex habitat build that I did um, a few days ago, actually I think it was when the Europe pack uh, released there, so about a week ago, I guess. Um, but anyways, in that build, um, I was kind of going um, in between making that a uh, a just a one-off habitat type build, or maybe uh, thinking about doing a mini Europe uh, zoo with it and everything. And uh, yeah, basically I was going to do that that was kind of the intent was um yeah cool let's go ahead and make a mini like europe pack zoo we'll feature all the animals and we'll use a lot of the new uh pieces in that and everything but um essentially long story short uh i, I saved over it i did a i did a ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> i went i went to load into it and the night before i was building in pine mountain sanctuary uh which you haven't seen that um i just released uh the brand new pine mountain sanctuary episode and i had uh Estan wolf and simply savannah join me for that so that's almost an hour long um episode episode or hour-long time-lapse looking at uh, Pine Mountain Sanctuary stuff there. So if you have some uh, time over the week and uh, you want almost like a podcast, almost, yeah, basically almost like a podcast style uh, Pine Mountain Sanctuary, be sure to jump over there and catch that. But anyways, um, yeah, making a short story long. Um, yeah, I, I just, I was building on that and I think I saved over the Alpine Ebex habitat. And I think I may have done it a little bit uh, subconsciously, to be honest with you, because I... I don't know, it was okay, and I know um, people you know, were giving nice comments and saying they liked it and everything, and you know, for the most part, it, it, was, um, it wasn't bad or anything, but it just wasn't really like anything that made me go, ooh, like, yeah, I try and do that like with a build, at least, like, I, I don't try and pat myself on the back too much, but I try and find something that, you know, at least inspires me um, a little bit when I'm building, and, you know, the, the reference photo that I did find for that build, it was, it was good, it was a nice, um, like, almost like a Bavarian, like, Alpine chalet uh, type building, and it looked uh, pretty nice in the reference photo, but it just didn't really translate over into Planet Zoo that well, I don't feel like, and I think it was also on my building end, um, like I mentioned in that video, that was kind of my first big actual build build um, in months, basically, so I was kind of really getting the, uh, shaking the rust off of the muscles and bones there, and um, and also the creative uh, muscles, I think I was kind of getting those uh, warmed up again, basically, so anyways, yeah, again, uh, uh, I accidentally saved over it, and I think that's kind of an okay thing. You know, we got um, I got the build out for the Alpine Ebex, um, and you know, it looked uh, okay, and at least we got a video out for the Europe pack on the day that it released. But um, yeah, overall, uh, yeah, I'm okay that I saved over it because I got to start a new uh, Europe pack mini zoo here, or a new take on it at least, uh, with this build today. So uh, yeah, what we're doing uh, with this again is just uh, the same idea that we're gonna do a uh, Europe pack mini zoo with all of the animals included. Uh, but the main theme of this one, because actually I'm not, I'm not going into this kind of blind. That was my big issue with uh, the previous build was I was really just going into it completely blind. I just kind of, I got my hands on the new Europe pack. I was, I was giddy. I was like a dog that was chasing a car kind of thing. It was like, oh man, I'm going to get it. I'm going to, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, but I've kind of had a, a few days to kind of wrap my head around the uh, Planet Zoo Europe pack and uh, kind of got a good idea of what I'd like to do. And yeah, we're going to build a, uh, a German Bavarian old or a, yeah kind of older small town basically with a surrounding woods where all of our uh, animals are gonna go so that is what we are starting off with um, here we are um, I'm just kind of building up a little main street and this is not actually inside of the quote-unquote zoo um, quite yet this is kind of a little main street area just outside of the entrance to the zoo and I use quotes there because I'm not really sure that I would classify this as a typical zoo uh, it's I don't even know how to explain like what this is um, it's almost like a town that you happen to be able to like a themed entertainment town that happens to have animals surrounding it but I'm not really like looking at it like a paid entrance I don't know it's it's all over the place it's just a kind of a random idea that looks cool um, <laughs> kind of thing so um, but yeah again that's kind of the idea that we're going for here is uh, going for that Bavarian um, kind of Alpine chalet type style I guess and yeah we're gonna have a surrounding um, really cool looking uh, woods because I say cool looking because the new foliage that we got in the uh, in the DLC is really really neat and it makes uh, makes it so that we can build these really cool like temperate I guess you know European obviously but yeah uh, these really cool uh, temperate European type um, forests with just like they have a totally different uh, color palette uh, compared to uh, the other trees that we have in game a lot of the trees uh, that we have in game that you would think would make up like uh, typical uh, woods uh, they have this really dark green tone to them or a almost um, 
sage green, I guess you'd say. It's either like one of those two, um, but there's nothing really in between. So I'm thinking of like the ash tree and the blue spruce uh, and the beech tree. Like all these trees are really, really good for um, making dense uh, forests. Usually they're my go-to, but again, they kind of all have that same green hue to them, that kind of same darkish green uh, hue to them. So getting these new European trees, the European pack trees, which is like the, I can't remember the name of them, all of them, but it's like the Alpine um, tree. And then there's a, oh my gosh, I'm butchering them. I should have brought, I should have pulled it up beforehand, but there's like three or four um, new ones and they have almost this, uh, not lime green, but just a lot lighter of a green, a lot more, um, a higher tint of green, I guess you'd say. Uh, with it and it um, combining that with the um, trees we already have especially the ash tree the beech tree um, the Douglas fir the the Himalayan and everything like that um, combining those together you get this really cool forest scape now um, of different uh, greens that you would actually see inside of a woods because you know it's not always just like you see you know one shade of green basically <laughs> throughout the entire uh, forest there you kind of see different shades and different um, textures and everything so yeah with the um, inclusion of all those uh, brand new trees um, I think that we get a really good uh, forest palette now and also one that um i didn't really expect to be really good or be able to use a lot is the olive tree um and i actually don't use it for a actual tree i kind of use it for a bush um, i use that and the uh the sausage tree which i never use because it has dinglings hanging off of it and i just like i hate it <laughs> it's like it's one of my favorite trees and it's also one of my least favorite trees all in the same uh breath there basically um i know there's a really great mod i think leaf made it um there's a really great mod on the workshop that gets rid of the the dinglings hanging off of the sausage tree but um i don't have that installed currently so but anyways yeah i use the top of that and the top of the olive uh, tree to make these really nice um, bushes in, in these uh, new uh, forests and everything like that. So uh, bada boom, bada bing, there's your little foliage pointer for the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, as we're going through here, we're using these new um, stained glass pieces and these are so cool. I love using these and I want to keep using these um, as much as I can, but um, the best way to use them in my opinion is to kind of, um, you know, have it open so that the sun kind of shines through there. Um, that's kind of the issue I was having. I put a, you know, I, I finished the building later on. I don't think I recorded it. No, I did that um, off camera. But anyways, I finished the back of the uh, building and then obviously the sun goes away. So I got to kind of figure out a way to either um, keep a side open or get some actual glass in the back of the building without actually showing the back of the building. I'm trying to do it where these are mainly facades and we don't have to worry about um, really decorating up all the sides of the building. We're only decorating up the sides that you can see from the pathway, basically. So very much, you know, theme park uh, 101 there is, you know, only decorate uh, what the guests can see. The rest of it, who cares? <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if it looks good or bad or if it's, you know, the backside of a backstage building or something like that. You know, it, it just doesn't matter. Whatever the guests can see, that is what matters there. So, um, but yeah, so I'll have to kind of figure out some uh, lighting in, uh, in the back there, depending uh, what I kind of do in the back area here. So, um, but yeah, so as we, <clears throat> excuse me, as we move forward here, we do another um, few other buildings and then we get started on like a little entrance gate area. It's, uh, I, I add in some like quote unquote ticket booths and that's what I mean. I'm kind of going back and forth on like, is this a full on zoo? Is this just like a themed town that someone built that happens to have, you know, wild, um, animals or you know captured or whatever uh animals and enclosures like surrounding it i don't know it's just kind of like it's a, it's an all it's it's a grab bag of things so it's just whatever idea kind of comes to my brain that is kind of what we are uh, going with there so and um, kind of speaking of the new Europe pack and all the new pieces and everything, um, a lot of the consensus I'm getting from you guys from like streaming and um, on Twitter and everything, it seems like people who used to play uh, Planet Coaster a lot, we're all getting the vibes that this feels uh, very much so like a Planet Coaster pack. Um, obviously, we you know we don't have any new rides with it. Which, oh my gosh, could you imagine if we got some uh, new rides in the game? That'd be so great. Um, but anyways, yeah, there's no new rides or anything, but just the pieces that we got with it, it just feels feels very um, planet coastered, all the themed up pieces, and um, really that's what got me um, inspired to build this really big themed out Bavarian type town and everything, um, is just the fact that as I was going 
as I was going through the pieces, it just really, really felt like a Planet Coaster uh, pack that we um, that we would get. Finally, there we go. I was waiting for it. Um, in the video, I just finally spun the um, the building around, and I was going to talk about that. Uh, when I first started um, building with this, uh, I didn't even kind of think about the sun placement. I think that's a lot of um, a lot of people don't really think about that. But if you can uh, try and consider or try and play around with the sun placement, because as you can see here, it looks so much better now. Excuse me, I, uh, uh, apologies if I cough and sniff a little bit. I, I'm getting over uh, COVID. I'm pretty much over it. I'm, I don't feel like really sick, uh, quote unquote, anymore. I just have like a little bit of a rattly cough that I get sometimes. And uh, as I talk a lot, I noticed this yesterday in my first stream kind of coming back, um, I will get a runny nose and stuff. So apologies um, if that um, kind of bothers you. But uh, but anyways, yeah, play with the, um, the uh, area of the sun and where your buildings are. Luckily, I didn't get too far into a uh, building here before it was uh, too much of a big mess to kind of uh, fix it and everything, you know, but yeah, just kind of play with the position of the sun because um, yeah, I mean, maybe you want these buildings in the shadow, but again, for me, I know this is the main entrance area. This is like the big uh, promenade that, or big main street that everyone kind of walks down to get into the, uh, into the zoo or into the park or into the town. See, I still don't know what it is. <laughs> I feel like by the end of the video, I'll stumble upon what this thing actually is um but um yeah so anyways yeah just uh sun position there so and then as we're going here doing some foliage work um, i do little pockets of highly detailed uh foliage work along this little river here and this river does extend uh, through most of the um, outside area of the town. Now, it's almost like the town uh, perimeter on its like east side. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of using this as a natural barrier for um, for the town perimeter, and it's kind of a nice area to separate, um, again, where the actual town area is and where the habitats um, are going. So um, but yeah, along the little stream, along the river there, I do these itty bitty, or these little small pockets um, of detailed work. I don't really do the entire thing because that would take forever, and I kind of think this is a good practice to start doing uh, to save on frame rates and um, sanity <laughs> basically because it just it takes so long to do uh, really highly detailed high quality um, foliage work in Planet Zoo and it, I mean it pays off obviously it looks amazing at the end of it um, but yeah I'm just kind of really trying to find little um, I don't want to call them shortcuts but just yeah little I guess little shortcuts that you know uh, for building these things so it doesn't take so long all the time and yeah it just kind of goes back to only building for what the guests can see so I'm kind of going through now and and uh, walking around in Tejid Cam, which is the cheat code that you enter in as a guest name to get you into guest view. And I just kind of look around. I'm like, you know, if this little area in the stream needs to be highly detailed, sure, we'll go ahead and do it. Or if, you know, if it's kind of covered up by a wall and the guests can't see over it really, then what's the point of detailing it kind of thing. So, um, yeah, this is kind of the um, mindset that I'm in for the river um, and for a lot of other areas is only detail if the guests can see it kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, as we're moving forward here, here we start on the entrance uh, ticket booths or entrance information kiosks or whatever they are um but they're there we are gonna build about uh three or four of these to make again it's kind of a little natural barrier um into the uh town area or into like the main plaza um of the town so um but yeah as we're kind of uh, building through here using the um the gridded circular option. Not sure if a lot of people uh, like to use this method. I know it can be a little bit daunting for some people to make, you know, circular um, buildings or circular objects and uh, stuff like that. So um, if you are just, I don't know, just kind of play around with it a little bit. I think it can uh, really elevate a lot of people's builds to kind of get uh, comfortable using the uh, the circular grid method here. And here you can see it um, right there. It's, it's really not that big a deal. You, you use the um, a circular center, I think it's the mud, pylon <laughs> i'm being really specific uh it's the mud pylon and that's a gridded piece so you start with that and then you put you know a non-gridded uh you know i'm really bad at explaining this i just realized as i'm going through i'm like man i can't even follow what i'm talking about there's a bunch of really really awesome videos not just for planet zoo don't just search planet zoo uh when you're looking up building uh tutorials and everything also look up Planet Coaster because a lot of the uh, building tutorials for Planet Zoo were honestly just kind of taken from Planet Coaster and kind of just redone for uh, Planet Zoo there. So uh, yeah, if you're looking up some really good building tutorials, uh, Jeff, definitely check out uh, Planet Coaster as well. There's some slight differences and um, the, the 3D axis works a little bit different um, in the in Planet Zoo compared to Planet Coaster, but overall it's, it's relatively the same stuff. One second, you have to get a drink real quick, talking for almost 15 minutes straight dries my throat out. <laughs> ah, 
Ah, there we go. So yeah, just finished the uh, first building there. And yeah, just gonna kind of multiply this around a few times to again, make this uh, little kind of uh, front gate area or front entrance area um, to the, uh, to the town <laughs> so uh, so there you go then we're gonna add in one more building um, to kind of complete out the front little entrance area here and then uh, yeah it's time to kind of move on into uh, the main town structure so we don't really get building on the main habitat until probably about the I think the middle to end of the video and this is about a half hour uh, long video not sure if I'm gonna be able to talk through the entire thing but I'm gonna try my damnedest so <laughs> um, but yeah as we um, uh, yeah again we don't really start building onto the habitat until about halfway through but the habitat um, is actually the quickest part of this build um, just because it's a lot of you know it's kind of just building up a little uh, mountain range and I've already done it once before I already built a um, an Alpine Ebex uh, habitat before uh, for the first build for this so I kind of already had a general idea for that of what I wanted to do um, but yeah so the Bavarian uh, town here that I'm doing actually takes the longest part there just because uh, I had a general idea of what I, what I wanted to do I had some really good reference photos uh, from like Pinterest and Google images um, but still just kind of trying to find the best buildings from each of the uh, reference photos to kind of um, put in here so uh, and a big thing that really sells I think this um, this little main street area for looking really nice is um, well eventually is going to be the foliage um, kind of harping back onto the uh, foliage I was talking about it looks really really nice with the um, Bavarian type village look and everything like that but also the color palette um, so that was a kind of a happen or happy accident uh, kind of pulled a Bob Ross there a little bit I guess but uh, yeah, I just was pulling random, all these buildings are based off, you know, the reference photos. So I was pulling random photos from the reference photos. Um, they weren't actually all next to each other. They were, again, they were from like multiple different um, photos. Uh, but yeah, they just kind of all work together with these really, really bright, vibrant colors. And uh, that's kind of the main theme of this town. And I want to kind of keep uh, going with it is just really getting these really bright colors to uh, work well with each other. And, and that's the thing is they don't always work really nicely. I'm, I'm, I'm currently starting on a second part of the town that looks very similar to this it's all kind of has this um you know same wood design and uh kind of same bright colors and everything but anyways yeah I, I started another row of them uh and yeah I had to kind of play around with the colors a whole bunch because I was starting to get kind of cocky with it almost you know it was kind of the point of like oh yeah you can just throw any bright colors together and you know even this building that we're working on here this is like the Jamaican flag colors almost basically it was like yeah even the you know Jamaican flag colors work with uh, any color next to it but nope not true at all um I was starting to mess with some like uh, just kind of out there colors a little bit and they don't all work but um, yeah thankfully this kind of was a happy accident that I stumbled upon uh, and all these colors uh, kind of work together there so I uh, love these brand new um, signs here. I think they came with the free update 1.8 for the memorial signs. Uh, so don't forget about that. That's kind of a really cool little thing that you would never um, imagine or think that Planet Zoo would uh, add in would be like little memorial signs. But I'm really glad they did because, again, it adds a, uh, for people that really like to play like franchise mode and um, all those different, you know, actually playing the game mode, not just doing like what I do, which is sandbox mode, um, adds a, another level of uh, depth to like your um, relationships, I guess you'd say, yeah, to your animals. And for us creative players, it gives us three new signs, actually two new signs that we can uh, like type on regularly and recolor that are really, really, really tiny. Um, and it gives us one that has a billboard in it as well, which gives us the function to have a teeny tiny uh, billboard and everything. So, um, but yeah, that was really nice to use for that end building there, the little memorial signs, because um, it makes for like nice little like plaques for um, like members only uh, clubs. We have two members only clubs right now. Uh, one one of them is a uh, a dinner like uh, club that is uh, Claire's place. Uh, Claire is an awesome uh, member of the community that has been with us for a long time and it just kind of worked out. I know it sounds great, doesn't it? Claire's place. It just kind of sounds like a little diner or a little supper club that you'd go to. So there's that and then there's this, um, I don't have a name for this green building there, um, but there. this is a members only like club that you can uh, only get into, um, yeah, if you're a member there. So uh, yeah, why don't you, um, why don't why we do that? If you've listened this far in the video, almost 20 minutes of listening to me jabber on, um, why don't you comment down below um, um, oh my gosh, I wasn't ready for this at all. Red Hat. <clears throat> if you comment down below Red Hat, I will consider, uh, I'll pick one of you to have this building named after. And this will be your members only uh, club there. So I'll go through and change the name of it. Right now it just says members only. I'll change it to, uh, you know, whoever um, 
comments down below red hat and I pick them I'll make it your uh, members only club there so there there we go I gotta start doing that stuff some more especially later in the videos for these longer ones to see who's actually uh, you know kind of ha having these on in the background or watching and everything so uh, yeah there you go don't forget red hat and we'll get you uh, as your members only uh, club there. As we're moving on, oh my gosh, these are so great. I love, love, love the decals. I, I save them for last now. Um, they're like the very last thing I add on to um, a build, just like the props. I, I, I used to do foliage and props um, as my very last things to add to an area. Now it's decals, foliage, and props. And holy cow, I, I think these are part of the uh, Europe pack. Uh, there might be some free ones with the um, update 1.8, uh, correct me down below if you do know uh, which one is which. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, if you uh, don't have uh, the decals, you have to get them. They add so much uh, to builds and everything. I've just I've seen so many people upload things in like Bro Nation and my Discord that uh, they're starting to add in these uh, little decals to like uh, concrete streets and sidewalks and you name. I mean, it just adds so much. I can't emphasize it enough. And I've uh, myself and many others have been. Um, calling for these for a really, really long time. Just because if you've played um, uh, City Skylines, City Skylines in particular, their modding scene over there, uh, they have a bunch of little decals that you can uh, put all over the place. And it really, again, it's like grungy decals or like parking lot decals, um, you know, oil spills, grass, you name it, you know, like any kind of thing that you can think would be a decal, they have it in City Skylines. And I've always thought that it would, um, lend itself really well for uh, Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster. And we got a little bit of them in Planet Coaster uh, with the modding scene. Um, but yeah, finally in Planet Zoo, we get them officially uh, from the team there. And I guess it was kind of, uh, you could kind of, the writing was on the wall a little bit with it, right? If uh, if you think back, they added an entire decals like subsection in the props building uh, tool area. So it's like, you know, and there's only the, uh, or were they like the gutter, not the gutter pieces, but like the, the vents. That's right, yeah, the vents. So there's only like a handful of them there, but uh, you had to have thought, um you have to think that they want to add in more uh, decals than just the few that they had. So, And they did, yeah. So we have a whole bunch of new decals there. Um, oh, yeah, this also. Um, another item that I'm not sure if it was part of the uh, Europe pack or if it was part of the free update 1.8, uh, but we got the new Periwinkle. I think that's the name of it. Oh, it might be something else. No, I think it is. The new Periwinkle... Um, ground cover and we get two different versions of it well four altogether um two of them are one of them's light green one of them's like a bright green and then we have uh two of them that are have flowers with them basically and anyways they are great for uh building coverage if you want to get like ivy or like uh yeah make it look like there's um again yeah like ivy growing up the side of the uh the structure and everything they are they are really really good for it um i don't mind the ivy that we have in game it doesn't look bad or anything excuse me but it's another one of those things where the um, the ivy that we have in game is really dark green, like really dark green, um, and it has very specific like textures on it too. To, um, so it, it doesn't look bad or anything, um, but it just I don't know if if you use the uh, the periwinkle or the I think it's the cow grass or the crow grass. Um, both of those um, give a different kind of green uh, color texture to it, and um, just makes it look a little bit better there. So uh, as we're moving forward, we're finally into the town, and big shout out! You can find this on the workshop if you like to to citrus uh size citrus cy for the church um i had an idea to want to put a church or like a town center or town square or not town square uh city hall there it is that's what the word i was looking for um so i went work, looking at the workshop and my gosh i typed in church and that was one of the first ones that i saw come up and it is perfect i almost used um you might have saw it a little bit in the um beginning there i almost used haribo's uh really awesomely detailed uh stone church and it does look really really good it's just a little bit too big uh for what i was looking for there but anyways yeah citrus cy citrus size i'm not sure how you pronounce it <laughs> uh they had this church up there and it was perfect i didn't have to change colors i didn't have to change you know the size of it or anything like that it was empty on the inside which was also perfect because i wanted to put a restaurant in there for guests to uh use and sit on the um outside wings of it or you know yeah sit outside uh just outside the church and everything so yeah big shout out to citrus cy for uh whenever you built that because yeah it worked out so so well um for the build. So, and speaking of the restaurants, unfortunately, at the time of recording this, which is uh, December 21st, a few hours before this goes live, 
Um, right now, the uh, restaurants and the new, um, what do you call them, the counters, the, the new counters, they don't work for uh, for me. And they also, I know um, a few other community members when I was streaming yesterday were uh, talking about how they're not working for them um, as well. So that does seem to be a little bugger um, Yeah, where the guests will, they'll basically start going towards the restaurant or go towards the um, the counter shop or whatever. Uh, and then they'll just kind of turn around. They'll get right to the entrance area of it and then they'll just turn around and... We did all the different hot fixes, you know, and tr bug fixes for it. I closed it and reopened it. I fired the vendor and hired a new one. Um, I deleted it and, you know, rebuilt it with all new vendors. And so I feel like we did just about everything we could. And also community members were doing a lot of stuff too. And we couldn't get it to work um, at all. So I think, um, I remember if, uh, if I remember, I think Rudy was having issues with it and a few others. So I think it is kind of a uh, known bug and we haven't had a patch come out yet for uh, update 1.8. And there's always, you know, that uh, first little patch that comes out and uh, kind of fixes everything. So I'm not too worried about it there, but uh, yeah, in the time being, I'm a little bit uh, deterred from building restaurants and those counter spaces just because, you know, if you build something and the guests like don't go use it like they're supposed to, it's kind of disheartening. <laughs> At least for me a little bit. It's just a little bit disheartening uh, for them to not use it and everything. But ah, what are you going to do? So hopefully we get a fix uh, for that out uh, very, very soon. Um, yeah, hey, as we're moving forward here, we are on to the uh, Alpine Ebex habitat here, which means we're getting pretty close to the end of the video. How the heck did I talk for almost a half hour? My God. Uh, but yeah, so the Alpine Ebex habitat, nothing really big interesting about it. I guess the biggest interesting thing about it is the uh, the grass that I'm using here. Always trying to remember to do that ever since uh, seeing Rome. Oh, I'm going to mispronounce your name, buddy. And I uh, I apologize, but uh, Romanopolanus. Oh my gosh, that's probably way off. But uh, they are the first one that I saw to kind of make their own uh, grass, just like you're seeing me do here. And I started to do it in the North America pack heavily. Um, but yeah, so the you know we get long grass in game with the uh, terrain paints, and that's it looks great. It's it's pretty um, pretty good for what you want it to do. But if you kind of zoom out, you can't really see the grass that much. Uh, the LODs are <clears throat> excuse me don't really lend themselves to be seen from very far away. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, so um, yeah, this method of you know kind of making your own grass uh, there. Uh it kills your frame rates. <laughs> I'm doing it mainly because I know that this is going to be a mini zoo and it's not going to cover half the map or maybe even a quarter of the map. Um, but yeah, so I, if I know that it's, you know, very small area or the zoo is going to be small, then I'll kind of consider doing this, but it's not something I recommend doing all the time. So, um, oh, and also harping back to what I was talking about earlier in the video, uh, you got to see me start to use the olive tree tops as well as the sausage tree uh, tops as, uh, as bushes. And again, I think they look really, really nice. Oh my, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is getting really stuffed up. I'm gonna have to wrap up here. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's, um, I just think they look really, really good as bushes um, for uh, for woods and everything like that. So, uh, but yeah, for the remainder of the video, not too, too much left to go there. This was a really big build. I just kind of sat down and built in one sitting for about five hours. There was not that many cuts during this thing. Um, I didn't get up that often. It was just like, I think it was Saturday and I was just like, let's do it. I got the vision, let's go. Um, but yeah, so the remainder of the video, a lot of foliage work um, a lot of rock work and I also build this little um almost like stone temple lookout where that little roundabout is on the left hand side of the pathway there um so yeah look out for me building that but don't get too attached to it i don't really like how it ended up um finishing or yeah basically how it looked in the end i do like the idea of it um here we go i'm starting with it right now um i do like the idea of it but i'm not too happy um happy happy with how it uh it came out so i do think i found a workshop item that actually might work perfectly for it um so i might just use that because why not if it works it works kind of thing um but anyways yeah i did still leave this thing because i might leave it we will see but um but yeah just kind of built a little um stone temple stone church or something like that bell tower kind of thing i don't know um out in the middle of the what was, will soon be woods so there you go but hey all right i'm gonna go ahead and take on off there everyone thanks so much for hanging out always do appreciate it if you've uh, hung out this long and you're not subscribed already be sure to hit that subscribe button uh, i am back uploading a bunch of videos a bunch of new series and all that kind of fun stuff, whether it's uh, Prehistoric Kingdom, Planet Zoo. Uh, those are the only two right now. <laughs> uh, but in those uh, games, we have uh, you know Prehistoric Kingdom, we have uh, Dino Kingdom, which we're going to be building a whole bunch on that. Planet Zoo, we have uh, this little zoo right here. We also have um, Pine Mountain Sanctuary, and I'm also going to be starting up the Franchise Mode Zoo again. And also, I've been kind of working on the background of, uh, in the background, I've been working on Sunset Ridge Zoo uh, 
uh, Take Two, basically. So that was a zoo that I had set in California um, that I accidentally uh, lost due to mods being in there that I forgot to update or something like that. Um, but anyways, I've been kind of working on a part two of that and it's looking pretty damn cool, not gonna lie. So we might get that out uh, kind of soon as well. So lots of fun stuff on the channel to come. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button. It does help out the video, uh, helps push it out to more people that might not see the channel otherwise. So hey, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Always do appreciate it. And yeah, we will see you in the next episode of the Mini Planet Zoo Europe Pack Mini Zoo. Bye.